Why do so many seem to feel so comfortable predicting a regression for this football team? The obvious answer is quarterback. But really? Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates, where you found this. The three-day mini camp that annually represents the end of off-season workouts did, in fact, end yesterday over on the south side. kind of liked what Mike Tomlin had to say right after the final practice. Bittersweet for us because, uh, you know, we're just starting to find our rhythm. Uh, but such is life, man. Uh, now we'll begin the independent portion of preparation. Uh, as we get into our offseason, some of the messages that we've left these guys with uh, is physical conditioning, preseason, anything else. It kind of starts there. And uh, that's the one element of it that, that, that they can control, regardless of their level of experience or exposure to professional ball or what we do here. They show up in great shape. They'll position themselves to perform well. And so that's some of the messaging that we've talked about. But it's been a good spring for us. A lot of opportunities to teach and learn. Uh, obviously, the next time we come together in official capacity is going to be compete time. And I'm sure we'll all be excited about that. Yeah, some things started clicking. Some things started moving. The motors started humming a little bit. Guys started to get to know each other. Guys, whenever they were doing their stretches or coming out onto the field, were piping up a little bit more, dancing occasionally, uh, loosening up. That's all good within the context of the work getting done, and the work undoubtedly was getting done, and progress was being made in the one area where it most needs to be made, and that is, of course, the offense. When you lose a Ben Roethlisberger, your franchise quarterback for 18 years, there's going to be significant skepticism, very fair skepticism, but also some really weird and unfair skepticism. Let me try to separate this. Ben came, as we don't need to constantly point out, with some real and visible limitations in the 2021 season. That's not a knock. He was 38 years old. There were major components to the Matt Canada offense from everything that we're told that could never have been put into an offense being run by Ben at that age. On top of that, the offensive line was, you saw it, I mean, it was a complete wreck. And then add to that Juju Smith-Schuster getting hurt and lost for the year, and it's a miracle the offense moved at all. Now, now, try to think about what the odds makers are going through, the betters, more relevant, are going through as they try to judge this football team going into the coming season. And for that matter, even the more uh, intangible prognosticators, the ones that are almost universally picking the Steelers to finish last in the division, I saw this week that ESPN had them having a great chance at having a top 10 pick in the draft for the first time in a long time, never mind that they traded up to get the number 10 pick for Devin Bush. They just think the team is going to be that bad. And when you really try to strip down their reasoning for it, you never find anything that's more weighty than the fact that Ben's not here anymore. And you know what? I can at least hear that argument on one and only one foundation, and that's that Ben was very effective last season, at times brilliant, when it came to fourth quarter comebacks, because that's the Ben thing. It's always been the Ben thing, to his credit. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying. Whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu.
So it stands to reason that for whatever else can be done to improve this offense, presumably with Mitch Trubisky at the helm, a big, big point, a pivoting point for this offense will be how that quarterback, whether it's Mitch or Mason Rudolph or Kenny Pickett or whoever, can handle the harder situations. Matt Canada brought that up himself this week, saying on his own that one of the things that Canada and Mike Sullivan and Mike Tomlin are looking for when this quarterback competition really gets going in Latrobe is which player looks like he can best handle uh, third and long, uh, fourth and two, a big situation at the goal line. How about clock management? the end of a half, or more significantly, at the end of the fourth quarter. Who looks like they can be that guy? Trubisky has the NFL experience, having been in the league five years, having started for four years in Chicago. And he's also carried himself very well through this offseason, including this mini camp that just passed, sounding a lot of the right notes, including this assessment of his yesterday is we are gelling. I mean, the more reps we get, the better we're going to get. So we're just getting to know each other, uh, know each other's strengths and, um, and, and repping the plays we like. So once we get on the same page, uh, there's no time where this offense can go. So we just got to go out there, continue to be ourselves. And I'm just trying to be a leader and lead us in the right direction. And I like where we're at so far. I thought we had a really good mini camp and I'm excited for training. Camp. But one gets the impression that he's going to have to get it done on Chuck Knoll field. First, that of course being the main field out in Latrobe at St. Vincent College. They'll have timed drills. They'll have two-minute hurry-up. They'll have situations and challenges presented for whichever quarterback happens to be operating the offense in that sequence. And while they can't simulate a game, and while they're not going to get anybody meaningful activity in the three total preseason games that they're now allotted, going to have to try to draw some kind of conclusions about a quarterback's leadership. We talk about leadership a lot, but we usually do so from the standpoint of, you know, who stands up after a tough loss or who has uh, the loudest voice. And I'm here to tell you that's not how coaches see it. Coaches don't care about that stuff. Coaches care about results in crunch time. I believe that this is Mason's job to lose going into Latrobe. I believe that this right here is one of those things where he could lose it. I'm not predicting that he will. Again, I've liked everything that I've seen or heard from him so far. But if he were to go into that camp setting and fumble the ball, throw the ball away, look generally flustered or happy-footed or whatever, that's going to be a red flag and that's going to be an opening for Rudolph and or Pickett to jump in and make the difference. Again, I'm not expecting this, not anticipating it, certainly not predicting it. Just saying that this is something that's really important to the Steelers because this is what really, really matters when it comes to separating NFL quarterbacks. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for... Just one question, and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garvin, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp and medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been designated Super Lawyers, capital S, capital L, for the past 15 years. And yes, that is a real thing. The Super Lawyer designation is reserved for the top 5% of all attorneys in Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. 
And today's J1Q comes from Ivan Chiriak in Barcelona, Spain. And Ivan asks, DK, in past years, it seemed as if there was always a key injury that prevented the Steelers from going over the hump and reaching a Super Bowl. My question is, which player or players would have the biggest impact on the team this year? Is there a single player who simply cannot be replaced and would make the team collapse? I do not believe that it will be our quarterback this year. So maybe TJ, Minka, Najee. Wow, Yvonne, way to uh, way to scrape for the most unbecoming possible outcome. But hey, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. I'm tempted to say Najee because right now, as the roster stands, Benny Snell would step in and be your feature back. And if you've been listening to the show all week over there in Barcelona, you'll know that I've been talking about how much I'd love to see another RB2 in the plans. And I believe that there will be one. I think you're going to have to see part of the way through the preseason and see which running backs become available from other teams. But to answer the question after assuming that another running back would be added, I'm going to go with TJ. And that's purely because you saw it play out last season. When TJ was on the field, the Steelers competed with anyone and everyone except the Chiefs. And when he wasn't on the field, my goodness, I mean, it was gruesome. Even within the span of games that he partially missed, you'd see that the Steelers were one team with him on the field and another entirely for the portion of the game that he'd miss. He is a wild card. He is something that opponents hate to prepare for because they know that they don't actually have an answer. There isn't an honest counter in facing TJ. You just have to deal with whatever damage he's going to cause. You can try to double him. You can try to chip him. Some teams have done that, surprisingly not as many as you'd expect. But once you take him out, and they can go at you just like you're a conventional non-TJ defense, it's like facing the Rams without Aaron Donald. Just the whole picture changes. Everything that you're doing, all of your strategies, your personnel assignments, they all change. But, and since you brought this up, Yvonne, I I feel like I should mention this as well, because I talk a lot about RB2, but OLB3 or OLB4 is still a need on this roster, arguably the second biggest need. I like what Derek Tuska did late last season. I don't think it's possible to dislike what he did. He made an impact. He made even some splash on the football. But help is needed there because TJ likes to rotate to keep himself fresh, to keep that motor going. The coaches prefer to rotate him for the very same reason. But, you know, it gets a little old. The rotation guy is someone at the Anthony Ciccolo level. You need to put someone on the field who's not just filling the space. You need to put someone out there who can make a play as well. That's part of what was so encouraging about Tuska, but you can't do it with just one guy. For the very reason you cite, players do get hurt. They get hurt within games. They need spelled for a a set of downs, or maybe a couple sets of down. TJ, Alex Highsmith, and Tuska need another body in there. They need someone else to really round out that group and to help make TJ all that he can be. But, Yvonne, that's the best I can do for you. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening, whether you're in Spain or, you know, like right across the street here from our Fifth Avenue downtown headquarters. We will have another Daily Shot of Steelers next Monday. Have a great weekend.